Okay, so we're going to look at starting the idea of circuits and the difference between this chapter and the previous chapter. The previous chapter was electrostatics, and we were looking at if we had charges that were fixed in place, then at a, just an instant in time, what was the forces between them, what was the energy, and then sometimes that energy got converted to um, kinetic energy, and then we looked at at this point in time what's kinetic energy. With circuits, we're looking at the movement of charges, the continual movement of charges, what causes charges to flow, what causes them to be impeded from movement, um, etc. So this is the unit of circuits. And the first thing we're going to look at is this idea of voltage difference or potential difference. And we've kind of looked at this already in the previous chapter, but in terms of how it relates to circuits, it's just this idea that if two points um, that have differing voltage are connected, different voltage are connected, then electrons will flow from the point of high potential to the point of low potential. This is kind of similar um, to gravitational potential difference. If you have um, a point up here that has a certain amount of gravitational potential and a point down here with a certain gravitational potential, and you provided a pathway for mass to travel through those two points, um, then the mass is going to travel from high potential to low potential. The one difference is that with mass, mass and matter can just flow through air. It's very easy. With charges, usually we need some kind of a conduit or wire for the charges to actually move from one place to the other because the air just impedes its movement. So we are primarily going to be looking at the voltage difference that's going to cause something. Technically, the um, symbol is a change in potential or a change in voltage, but because normally we say that one of our voltages, we'll call it V1, uh, V2, because normally V2 is at zero volts. This then just becomes um, just voltage. So we're not necessarily going to write out delta V. It is a difference in voltage, but we don't necessarily care like, what those absolute points are. We just care that there is a difference between them of a certain value. Okay? So like if V1 is 12 volts, our potential is, our potential difference is just 12 volts. So normally we'll just call it V is 12. That's the potential difference of our system. Okay? So, that gets us into the idea of current, and we're going to define this starting off with what's called conventional current. And we looked at, um, I have to sneeze. <coughs> so if I have two points that are have that have a potential difference, and I'm looking at connecting them, then conventional current is the amount of current that flows past a given point in a certain amount of time. I talked about this um, earlier with uh, the fact that um, technically it's the electrons that are moving, but remember when they first defined it, they didn't really know which ones moved, and so they just assigned it was the positive ones that moved. So conventional current is the direction that positive charges would flow. And we just kind of have to go with that definition. It's a wobbly board. And so we just need to know that electron flow is actually opposite conventional current. Uh, the symbol for current is a capital I. <laughs> when we get back into class, um, I'll explain where the I comes from. And the equation 
is write on the definition, I is equal to the amount of charge that flows past a given point in a given amount of time. So I is equal to Q over T. And if we think about the units, um, charge is measured in coulombs, and T is measured in seconds. And so coulombs per second becomes a new unit called an ampere. And sometimes it's abbreviated as an amp, or sometimes we just abbreviate it as a capital A. So let's just go through one example of current. So this problem says, how long would it take for 0 0.003 coulombs of charge to flow past a given point in a wire that carries a current of one nanoamp? So in looking at the quantities that this problem gives us, um, 0 0.003 coulombs is Q, and we're looking for how long, so we're looking for what is the time um, to pass a given point in a wire that carries a current of one nanoamp, so that is my I value. So this is pretty straightforward, I is just equal to Q over T. So I've got one nano, nano is times 10 to the negative nine, to my charge, so 0 0.003 over my time, and go ahead and try to calculate that out. If you want to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video. And when you calculate that out, the time, it's a really big amount of time, it's 3 million seconds. Um, and just that's just to kind of give you an idea, because that's a pretty small current, 1 nanoamp. Um, but 0 0.003 coulombs is a big amount of charge. That's a lot of charge that we're waiting to go by for such a small current. 